call this meeting in the order then for February 2nd, 2021. Cindy. It was, I have two guests to, um, um, I'm trying to look up their names. It's Hope and someone else from that group. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. Okay. I don't see Hope somewhere. I don't either. Well, they may be late. I don't know. I will. Oh, Neo Zimmerman and Hope, you said. Oh, they're going to okay. visit. Awesome. I'd like to. Uh, oh, okay. never mind. It's for the zone meeting. Ah. <laughs> okay. Zone <laughs> meeting, so little time. Say hello to Terry, our new our new member. Hello. She's back. <laughs> and our, our guest speaker uh, will be introduced later and talk to us about the MD19 band. So, where is Terry? Terry's. Oh, I ha I don't have my name set up yet. Oh, it's it's older. Older. Oh, on my computer. Yeah. You, you want me to rename you? <laughs> sure. I can be well, named Terry too. You do not want that. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I did it wrong, tell me. I'll fix it. Looks two hours. Good. I know there's a zone meeting tonight at seven. Um, yeah. And do I see Ken and Marnie on? They are. They're going to be. Marnie's oh. here. Yeah, he's here. here. Okay. All right. I'm here. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So, Ken, anything except for the zone meeting tonight at 7? Tonight at 7 o'clock at our zone meeting, uh, past district governor Doug Hall and uh, Leslie Chase, the uh, zone chair for G6, will be okay. our guest tonight at the meeting. Okay. Do we, we have, have a link? Put it up at about a quarter till seven. I'll, I'll send it out after this meeting. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, Greg Firth, anything on membership? No. Oh. Uh, just a little. Um, You're not in the picture. Doug, uh, Harvey will have uh, two members or two applications <laughs> next <laughs> week. At which time I'll ask for a special board meeting after the regular meeting to approve those. Okay. Uh, those are the only two I know of at this time. Uh, we do have a number of people that have not paid their dues. And uh, I'm going to get together with Dolly and uh, we're going to get a second uh, notice going out. thought I heard that last week. <laughs> I did what last week? You didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, Steve? Come on. Yeah, this is regarding membership. Um, we've got enough people now and uh, coming in. We're, we're going to do an induction. Orientation uh, or induction? No, no. Okay. Just listen, Hal. <laughs> I want to make sure. Just the idea listen. was to not confuse people, and I did it for you. Thank you. Can we mute you here at all? Or... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do an induction for those members that need it, and we'll do it on awards day uh, at the end of the month. And okay. then on March, with the second Tuesday... I believe it's the ninth. Yeah, it is. It is. Yes, it is. We'll do orientation, and it looks as though because we can't do gatherings of at least twenty to or under how many, the gathering is going to be the limitation. We may do our orientation 25. online. Twenty-five. And, uh, there's a couple of people that would like to attend from out of the area. But we'll be able to do induction at the end of the month, and then two weeks later we'll do orientation. And I believe right now uh, we could we have the ability to do it online, and I have my presentation ready to go. I just uh, need to put it into a, a what do you call those little thumb drives? Oh, flash anyway, drive. Flash, flash drive. Flash yeah. Flash yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Induction and orientation just around the corner. 
Okay. So that would be February 23rd, the last Tuesday of the month for the induction. And yep. then on March 10th would be art orientation. Is that a Tuesday? No, it's a Wednesday, so it'd be 9th. Wanna, oh, that's we, I want to do it on Tuesday. Night. Okay. That's the night. Larry on who is the uh, program chair for March? March. Um Gina. Larry. No, Gina is for yeah, for March. Gina is. Gina. You can't go to the which month I'm in. <laughs> Did you know that, Gina? <laughs> Gina, do you have that second Tuesday in in uh, March filled? You're muted. I do not have it filled because I wasn't aware, but I'll get busy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do what? Yay! I wasn't get aware. Busy. Getting busy. Uh, I wasn't okay. aware of that, uh, but I'll get busy. Uh, so you need the you need the second Tuesday for orientation. So yeah, thanks. If we can if we I can do it. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Okay, we'll do that. We'll, we can do that. Yeah, okay. but we, isn't isn't orientation usually as it's not usually done at a meeting, is it? It's the induction that's done at the meeting. Yeah. Well, induction. This is a. Uh, these are different times. Uh, we're adapting. We're you know. Okay. That could be our program. Okay. All right. We're going to adapt. We're going to adapt. Okay. Induction right. we can do online, and orientation we can do online. Okay. And it would be for us to revisit that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. That's, That's a good idea. Okay. And hey, I mean, we're not going to be able to. If we're not going to be able to meet for you know a number of months. Yeah. And let's adapt. Okay. Um, well, I thought that, uh, that will work. We I just have to that coordinate. That. Well, I'll have to coordinate with Cindy Fickett on getting mm -hmm. membership packets to the new inductees. Okay. We'll yeah. figure that out. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Oh, is there it's doable. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah. So, yep. uh, happy or sad bucks today? Well, well, my first happy buck is to see Jim Waters back on the screen. Yay! Yay. Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the question is, is because of your thing. admittance to the hospital, is there now a higher brain level? That's what we're, that's all we want to know. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jim. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Second happy oh, yeah. buck is I had a great time in uh, real estate in Las Vegas last week. <laughs> and the third happy buck is my brother's gone again. He's decided that he can um, travel with his significant other and be less bored than staying home. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the business is running well without him. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dwayne? I have an unhappy buck. Uh, this morning I checked on my computer and looked like they were uh, giving uh, antivirus shots down in Vancouver at a clinic. So I drove all the way down there and I found out that the line went all the way around the block at 6 a.m. <laughs> so I got there at 10 a.m. So it was like, sorry. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, Marilyn? I have a happy buck. I'm really excited that Eileen Reinecke is on. She's changed, though. She's got a blue helmet and a pipe in her mouth. It's not, at least it's not that cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. A blue helmet. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. <laughs> it's a hard hat. <laughs> it's a blue helmet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cheryl? I am just happy that Phil Olson is not starving to death. Oh. What you're eating there it looks delicious. <laughs> Isla? If you were here, I would share. <laughs> um, it's not really a happy book, but it's a big thank you to Dwayne Smith. 
because I missed last week's meeting and I got to see that I got an award. Now, who chose that picture is what I want to know. Okay, Gina, I have to tell you about that picture. That picture was taken at my son's wedding. Did you see something strange on top of my head? Yeah. It was a big orange cone because I was the dunce. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, yeah, that's, that's the one. Well, we don't think so. We don't think you're a dunce at all. We yeah, celebrated you last week. It, it, it just cracked me up. Of all the pictures you could find on my Facebook, that's the one you chose. Well, you know, I stole it in a hurry. <laughs> but thank you, Dwayne, for posting because I do look at them if I miss a meeting. So thank you again, Dwayne. All right. Okay, any more happy or sad bucks? Tom? I'll yeah, pay five uh, happy, happy sad bucks. I, I have a sad buck that Lloyd didn't help us yesterday when we were cleaning at the shop. <laughs> Just stood there and held the hose, and I wasn't sure what the problem was, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Phil? <laughs> Well, with, with all the unhappiness about uh, the trouble getting uh, injections for COVID, uh, I did go to the VA last week and got my first shot, and it was, they had it beautifully, beautifully set up. So they do. Uh, there is um, not all the news is bad, but uh, uh, I feel for you folks that uh, are fighting so hard to get shots and can't can't get to the front of the line. I know I got mine last Friday too, and I I think it was just luck the way that I got into it. So, uh, did you have a sore arm for two days? Uh, just about a day. I went swimming that afternoon, so oh. you know, uh, Marilyn. I would just like to say I have a happy buck. Terry Smith, our newest member, and I ventured out to have a dinner together so that we could get to know each other. We've been communicating by phone for so long or email, and we decided that a face-to-face -face gathering might be okay. So we ventured to Terry's restaurant on Ocean Beach Highway, and they do have a little tented area outside. But we picked the coldest day in the month, so <laughs> we sat at the table, ordered our food to go, and uh, had opportunity to meet where she lives, which is real close by. They have an apartment area that's open, so we were comfortable, and we weren't around anyone else, so that was great. So that was fun, just to know who we were talking to, you know? It's yes. nice to have a face. <laughs> face to face. Yeah, yes. It's at a distance. By, by telephone, okay? Marilyn yeah. represents the best of us, Terry, so yeah. oh, I'm yeah. from there. Yes, she's been special. I, I figured by by the end of June, we might be able to meet in person, maybe. Maybe. If, you know, I, I figured, no, I'm just going to pass on the, the gavel on to Tom, right? You know, probably through Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you got it. I know. <laughs> I'll pass it on the same way. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I will turn this over to Marilyn as our program chair for the month. So, Marilyn. Hey. Dear fellow Lions, I would like to introduce uh, to you Jordiel Castillo. I hope I say that correctly, Jordiel. But just to give you an insight, the first time I saw him, he was attending an MD19 council meeting and uh, presenting a proposal to the council for approval to develop an MD-19 band. Just as a highlight, these select individuals for this band uh, have opportunity to march in special parades, such as International Convention, which of course he may talk about this year because it's been changed to virtual, they have to adapt too. Jordil is currently a senior at Pacific Lutheran University, where he studies secondary music education. Mr. Castile is a euphonium player and participates in the university wind ensemble mm -hmm. as the euphonium section leader. And I wasn't sure what euphonium was, so he could explain it, but I did actually look it up. 
and it is a uh, trumpet of sorts. It has four oh. buttons or valves, as Steve would oh. say, as opposed to a trumpet as three. Jordale is also a member of several community bands in Puyallup Valley area. He is the associate conductor of the Puyallup Valley Community Band. Jordale also plays with South Sound Symphonic Band and also plays with the 133rd Army National Guard Band. Jardil is also an active lion in Spanaway Lions Club. And while in the club, he became the founder of MD-19 Lions Band. Jardil was born in Miami, Florida, has lived both in states of Maryland and Pennsylvania. Before attending PLU, Jardil served in the U.S. Army on active duty. He was stationed in Washington State at Joint Base Lewis McCord. Mr. Castillo is a recipient of numerous Army service ribbons and recognitions. He can tell you about them if he chooses to do so. Um, also, he received an Army Good Conduct Medal and was medically honorably discharged from the U.S. Army in October of 2017. And I'd say at this point, we're really thankful that he stayed within the state of Washington and uh, is making a difference in our state and Lions. So please welcome Jordil Castillo. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually speaking to a Lions club besides my own. So I'm very excited. Um, let's see. Uh, well, it's good to see that people are actually meeting and adapting to the times and having Lions meetings as uh, we continue through the fight through the pandemic. And it's glad to hear that some of you have been vaccinated. It's glad to hear that uh, the VA is also doing a wonderful job providing vaccines as well to our vets. And thank you for those veterans here in the group for your service. Um, let's see. I, will, I wrote down a list of things I would like to talk about. Uh, first, uh, where I'm from, uh, as stated in my bio, I was born in Miami, Florida. I lived in the state of Pennsylvania and Maryland while growing up. Uh, while in Pennsylvania, I played in the Pennsylvania All-State Lions Club Band, um, which is the original thought for creating a multiple district 19 Lions Band, and that's how we got to this, I got to this point of this idea. Um, let's see. Um, I belong, like said, uh, to the Spanaway Lions Club in 19C, uh, and what I'm currently doing is uh, coming to you all live from uh, outside of my house right next to campus. Uh, right now, we don't have full-time classes because uh, we're still on winter break until the 17th uh, due to COVID, so we won't be returning back into the classroom until February 17th, so I'm kind of on a small little break. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, the way I came up with the idea for the line span was I reached out for those of you who know, um, Peter Anderson, the executive director, uh, I reached out to him in an email and I asked him, uh, for information about a line span. I didn't know if there was a band in MV19 and, uh, during this time, it was last May, right, start of the pandemic, and because the Pennsylvania band is such a tight-knit group of people, um, we usually also do an alumni performance with uh, current members of the PA Lions Club Band and alumni from the PA Lions Band. Um, so they adapted, and what they wanted to do was a virtual video um, of alumni and current students performing together in the PA Polka, uh, which is our state song back in Pennsylvania. Uh, and when that came to mind, when I got asked to play in this video, it reminded me about the line span, uh, something that I, since that time, since I left high school, wasn't a part of because it due to being in the army. Um, so I, the idea came to me, so I reached out to Peter and I said, hey, I don't see anything on the website about a band. I've Googled, I've Facebooked, I haven't seen a single thing about it. Uh, so he said he was going to hit up some of the old timers and see if they had any information about there being a band. And the answer he got back to me with was there has never been a band. And being a music person and being a future music teacher, I was extremely sad about that. 
and thought that I needed to change it because I know what it did for me and my sisters being part of the Lions band and what it did for a lot of my other fellow friends who uh, were in the PA band and become Lions themselves and who are music teachers out there in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, so I talked to Peter and I said, uh, well, if nobody's ever wanted to spearhead this operation, I said, I have all summer long. Plus, because of COVID, I have nothing else to do. So I got down to working and started coming up with plans on how we would operate this uh, this ensemble. And I reached out to my high school band director, who's the, uh, the director of the Pennsylvania Lions Club Band. And I asked him for some help working through uh, the certain aspects and things that we would need. Um, yes, there's the page. Uh, certain things that we would need um, to to have a good running uh, band. Uh, if you click about the band there, whoever's in charge of that, uh, and then go to leadership and all state committee. Uh, this is kind of the same format. We've set up the, the MD19 Lions band page. The first person right there, that's my high school band director. Uh, Mr. LaRusso, and then Dr. McCutcheon, and a uh, few other members from throughout the state who are band directors in the state. Um, cool. Uh, so, yeah, I reached I reached out to Peter and asked him and said, hey, I'll take this on. And uh, all summer long, I worked through this and got help from some of my fellow colleagues here in the Puyallup Valley region um, to help come up with the band. Um, so... If in the search bar, whoever's in charge, um, if you can type in MD19 Lions Band, that will take you to our web page. Uh, dot org, I think it is. Yeah. It should be that first one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what our page currently looks like. Uh, we spent about three months kind of developing all the aspects and things inside the page. Um, can you scroll down, please? Um, so on the introductory page, uh, if whoever has the mouse can scroll down on the view of the page. Ow! You're on the phone. <laughs> Ow! Hang up! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> No, no. Oh, boy. Little folks. Let's see. Maybe I can override. Yeah, you got to be careful when you call hell. He'll try to sell you a boat or a condo. <laughs> oh, apologize, Jordi, all for all Oh, no, I'm perfectly fine. We're perfectly entertaining, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Always. You, you want to buy a boat, by the way? <laughs> I, as a student, I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Uh, but maybe in the future, now I know who to go to. <laughs> well, you might not want to go sailing with Hal. <laughs> no, no, I just heard stories, and that was more than enough for me. <laughs> well... Let's see. How? I'm sending him a message. Something about something about being stuck until high tide on the sandbar in oh. the Columbia. <laughs> Are running out of gas. What the hell doing anyway? Somebody just out get him. I just sent him a text. Let's see if he'll see it. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> What's up? I'm sorry, I take quick calls. Yeah, uh -huh. we can see that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I go back to the MD19 band. I forgot Please. about that. Well, I think I can So if you just drop out of screen share, I can do it from my side here. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Oh, good. No, here. Oh, good. All right, here we go. You're going to do it yourself. Good. I, I did share a screen for you. All righty. Can everyone see that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So this is what our page looks like. And what we were trying to do uh, at the beginning of the page, give a, um, a background, first of all, on what lines was. We realized that a 
few high school students who either don't have Leo's clubs or don't have family members involved might not know what it is. So we wanted to pull them in uh, and speak to them kind of on a personal level about what the Lions is and what we do. Um, so what we've taken here is uh, a video that was published by uh, Lions International here that explains all the things that Lions does throughout the planet. And then we've taken here and we added some videos of uh, the two better bands uh, in the U.S., which would be the Mississippi Band and also the Pennsylvania Band. And then last here is just the mission statement of Lions um, and a video to go with it. Um, so then we have here is, uh, this is our leadership staff, uh, Dr. Wasik. He is the director of bands at St. Martin's University uh, in Lacey, Washington, uh, just south from me. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Wasik, uh, I've known him for a while. He actually studied at the University of Maryland. Uh, so I've known him since his time in, Mar in Maryland and my time in Maryland. Uh, this is about myself. Uh, this is the vice chairman of the band, uh, Mr. Birch. Uh, Mr. Birch and I went to undergrad together and both uh, went to PLU. That's how I know him. Uh, Ms. Megan Wagner. Uh, she also is a PLU alum of, I think, before when I was born. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and she's a great musician, a great band director, and she has some fantastic, amazing students who are in uh, next week performing at the All Northwest National Conference. Uh, I think she had about five or six students make it into that band, um, which is a pretty outstanding, remarkable uh, statement on her. And then Mr. Tim Hager, uh, who is our percussion chairman and knows everything about drums and vibraphones and symphonies and all that fun stuff. Um, so that's everyone who's on our committee right now. Uh, due to COVID, we haven't been able to fully uh, reach out to everybody that we could possibly have. We do have two slots that are still open. One's the, uh, the Northern Idaho representative, band director from Northern Idaho, and, uh, and a person from uh, British Columbia. Uh, on this tab, uh, it's what we had as our presentation for the tour. Um, like we said, uh, International has determined that the conference uh, will be all virtual. So we are no longer uh, uh, planning to attend the convention in Montreal since it's gone virtual. Uh, but this is our draft of what everything was looking like before uh, we got canceled. Um, so students, uh, just a little background of what was going to happen. Um, students were going to spend uh, a three-day band camp period at Pacific Lutheran University. They were going to be able to stay in the dorms and we're going to rehearse in our music facilities here at PLU. Um, and that was just to have them all come together, get themselves to meet each other, acquainted, uh, rehearse the 15 different pieces of music that we would have had to prepare for our PLU. Um, we would have had prepare at for our tour. Uh, here's our concert hall. It's fantastic uh, building here. Uh, Mary Baker Russell, mm -hmm. Mary Russell mm -hmm. Hall, um, where I get to play all my concerts. And I was actually talking to a friend yesterday, saying that the last time we performed a concert in this space was over a year and three months ago. Really sad. Um, but uh, we were going to have comprised uh, numbers of a 50-piece marching band uh, with 50 students who are all uh, high school age musicians, uh, ninth grade through 12th grade. Uh, and we're going to learn about 14 different pieces. Uh, and then here's a breakdown of how we came up with trip costs and how everything also is going to be funded for the trip. Uh, and yeah, so we kind of went through and found out all the things that we needed to have on on our page to have students be able to do this uh, as easily as possible through the pandemic uh, and unfortunately we won't be able to do it but here's uh how to become a member and explains what the requirements were to become a member how to do a assessment video uh, that was submitted to the staff and we would look over it and give a um not really a ranking or a grade but just a 
feedback to students uh, about their performance and how um, their sound would blend into the ideal sound that we have. Since it's just uh, such a short time period of three days to put together uh, 15 different pieces of music with people who've never probably played before, uh, it's really challenging. We had a concert given to us. Oh, this is select. Symphony from America, or something for this youth, though. It was. Yeah. So it's very, uh, very yeah. nice to they have to be. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's a, another page that we came up with on the website just to ease uh, the thoughts that some parents might have. So this kind of uh, a four student section here. Uh, was for band members to explain everything on um, where we're rehearsing, how they're getting their meals, uh, how they're being transported, the location to uh, PLU, so they just have to go here, click it, and it put it in your GPS, and it takes you right through the university. Um, same kind of concerns for parents, uh, where children skin, what happens if the child is on the floor, uniforms, all those things, all the questions that a typical parent has um, of trips like this, and then uh, a statement for music educators, so for your kids' band directors, to explain them why I decided to join Lions, why I participated in the Lions band, what my sisters did, and um, why this is an important experience for their students and why they should allow their students to participate in a group like this. Um, so uh, that was our whole basis here of what we were trying to do for uh, the international convention, but now since that's been canceled, I was actually before this uh, meeting and, and talking to people about what our plan C and B are going to be like. Uh, right now, plan B is to take four of the pieces that we already have purchased and own um, and send it out to students and do a virtual concert and then send that to international that way they can be displayed on the conference center on um, people can watch that video so it would have been uh two pieces would have been the Na our united states national anthem and then the national anthem of uh british columbia or canada um and then after that it would have been a piece that would have went with the times so something along the lines of amazing grace and then finally, what would have been our piece that we would march to in the parade, uh, we would have we were thinking about recording those four, doing them into a virtual uh, uh, concert series um, of the like. Uh, and then plan C is uh, what I was actually working on right before this was finding the dates for uh, the district convention and shooting for us to do a live performance at the district convention in November, um, which I think for me sounds better than making videos online and doing more virtual things since everything's been virtual and it gives me a sense of optimism and it'll give students a sense of optimism that they're actually going to get back to being able to play their instruments live and making music for people, um, which I think is all joy that we need and deserve after this past year. Um, so for for the district convention, it is the first week of November, and what we're working on now is the same concept that we had for international, except we have to worry about a few different things. Of Transportation is a little bit more challenging because we'd have to bring students uh, from northern Idaho all the way up to British Columbia. Uh, to Vancouver, where the convention is going to be held. So we're going to, uh, right now, working on a plan for four separate buses. So the east, an eastern bus, a central kind of Washington bus, uh, a a Snoqualmie kind of regional area, Moses Lake, uh, Leavenworth kind of regional bus, and then one western I-5 corridor bus. And the premise of that is that we're trying to provide the transportation for all the students to go to uh, Vancouver at a zero cost to them. That way they don't have to pay for anything. Um, so we put them on this bus. The bus would take them up to the convention center, and then we would rehearse uh, the first night of the conference. We'd do our own rehearsals, and then the following two days will be breakdowns of about two concerts per day. So there would be kind of a lunch day concert and an evening concert and then the same thing would happen on Saturday where there's a lunch and then a go away concert. Um, so we're trying to fit in four concerts 
um, and do that. So right now I'm working on the numbers for how all that's going to get added up and how what that's going to equate to. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's what things are looking like right now. Um, as in for if anybody has any questions about anything or wants me to give time to just have a good conversation about the band and ask questions about it or ask me any questions, uh, I'd like to do that now before uh, we move on. Yes. So, let's see, any questions? Uh, Arla? Um, how are you funded? I'm not sure to mention that. Yes, so we are a sub-entity of the Lions Foundation. So uh, this past October, which seems like forever ago, uh, we did get authorized a grant of $23,000 um, from the foundation, which is still still there in the bank. Um, and then we are, Peter uh, is working out the numbers for this upcoming budget, and it looks like uh, it's going to be around $10,000 to $13,000 will come from the actual district itself, uh, which puts us about $33,000-ish. Uh, so far, and then the rest, uh, we've been talking about this between the foundation and how this could work because there's a lot of things that have to go into play. But um, we are going to possibly ask for independent lines clubs to donate about fifty to a hundred dollars um, to be able to fund the band. Does that cover the cost of your lodging while you're at places? Yes, so for this past trip, uh, if we would have gone to international, everything would have been covered for students. Uh, students would have had to make a small little payment compared to what the actual sticker price was for things. Uh, so we were asking students to pay $875 uh, to be able to go on international. <laughs> it, yes, it's like a very nice small price tag for, uh, I think, uh, when I was in the PA band, we would pay, when we went to Toronto in 2012 or 13, can't remember what tour that was, um, but I think I paid 3800 and something dollars to go to Toronto, and we're right there. So I think uh, getting the cost down to 875 bucks for students is uh, a lot more feasible than asking them to come up with $3,000. Do you have plans to get their costs down more? Because that just doesn't uh, seem right. Yeah, so we can, but I, it's taking the numbers on. We know that clubs aren't paying dues, and we know that membership is down in some clubs because of COVID and all the restrictions and everything else. So we were lowballing the number of what can be donated uh, from Lions Clubs, which we were thinking at minimum could be $50. Um, and then after that, uh, we, at the council of governors meeting, I got a whiff that we could actually out the band to other Lions clubs to perform for them. And some Lions clubs do that and they make money that way, which I think would be a very cool idea to look into and see if other Lions clubs are open to that uh, throughout the country to use our band uh, for the parade. Um, and then... The other thing was kind of doing regular fundraising events throughout the community and asking booster clubs uh, if they have a student who's in the band that is going to go on this trip, their booster club can donate uh, money for that. Uh, also, if a club has a individual student that they would like to sponsor, depending on how willing the club is, can sponsor a student to bring that cost down for the students as well. So, yes, go ahead. Hey Bill, I uh, see that International is in India next year, so that's probably out of range for you guys. But in 23, it's in Boston, so okay. maybe your band could shoot for Yes, we are shooting for Boston. Uh, we, that's the rotation we agreed to with, uh, with the governors and with uh, the band committee, is we will do 
domestic international <laughs> travel. So uh, Boston, things like Mexico City, Toronto, Montreal. Uh, if it's somewhere around feasible for us to have it at a low cost, it will be places that are truly international, kind of like Australia, Hawaii, I mean, not Hawaii, um, India, uh, Malaysia, or wherever else, Japan, uh, are a little bit more challenging, a lot more costly. So, Bill? Uh, I just wanted to mention for anybody who is curious about the euphonium, it is one of the most yeah. glorious instruments ever. And yeah. there is a film uh, that, uh, that has... Uh, if you wanted to hear it at its very best, it's called Brassed Off, B-R-A-S-S-E-D-O-F-F. -F. Uh, you'll see the euphonium featured in that, and it is absolutely breathtaking. Okay. Is, there, is there any students from Southwest Washington in your band? Uh, currently, right now, there isn't, and that's the problem that we've had so far is a lot of... Oh, Right now, the world of music is in so many different categories, with, even within the state. Kind of university levels, you're allowed to perform, uh, you're allowed to have rehearsals, but you're not allowed to give performances, which kind of really doesn't make sense. Uh, for example, if you're in the band world, you can't perform indoors, it has to be outdoors, which really doesn't work right now because it's raining outside, it's Western Washington. Um, and a lot of schools have gone, I know the Puyallup Valley School District has gone from like being in person to going back online to being back in person. And it's just this big battle back and forth. So uh, right now, the numbers that we have uh, aren't the typical numbers I think we would have project to have for a regular standard academic year, or at least also the fact that a lot of students are concerned of just traveling in general, which they would have been for Montreal because of COVID, uh, I think is another reason why that isn't, uh, we don't have as many numbers as we would like to have for that. So how do you get the information out to the high schools? And uh, so my band director uh, here at PLU He's currently the uh, the president elect of the Washington Music Educators Association, which is our overall umbrella for music ed. Um, and he has contact with all the band directors in the state, elementary school, all the way up to high school and collegiately. Uh, so we've dispersed with them. Uh, we've also created a membership, a partner membership with WMEA. Uh, the Washington Music Educators Association. So we have our advertisements go in with all of their things. Uh, if this year our conference is next week, so if it was a regular year, the Lions Band would have its own booth where we would have been able to distribute all our information out and all that stuff. It also would have gone into, I don't think I have one here. Uh, there's called a Voice Magazine, which is the, the Music Educators Magazine. Um, and that would have gone in there too, the advertisement for that. And then we have just been sending direct emails to all the band directors that we know that we have on our email list and working with them. Uh, right now, that's the big issue that we've had while talking to band directors is just they feel a sense of that their students don't want to sign up for something that's uncertain because right. they feel like they're going to be let down. Right. And we don't, I don't think we want to start off by doing that to them. So. Okay. All right. Uh, Hal? How many of your leadership team are actually a member of the local Lions Clubs where they live? Uh, I am the only one. My no. suggestion is you encourage them to join those clubs, and then you're going to get your band people. Because yes. when they see the leaders, it really opens their eyes. And you can sponsor them. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Okay, any other questions? Oh, Gina? Well, mine's not really a question, but uh, my granddaughter is a senior at Kelso High School this year. She plays uh, oh, one of the things that she this. was doing uh, uh, to pick her college was they had to have a marching band. 
And I will certainly share this video. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. I will certainly share this video with her. But she has been let down a lot because of the music program uh, right now. She's been in school and out of school. But they cannot play their instruments at school. So they've got all these lectures. And then they, there were some hopes that because they had this special uh, thing that they could put on their instrument and uh, and try to play. But that hasn't come about. So I will share this video with her and let her know what's going on because she has volunteered for, with our Lions for, for a long time and she really enjoys this group in particular. And uh, so I'm just stay, I'm just throwing it out there to you that I will share this. And she's going to WSU uh, in Pullman so that she can be in a marching band, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's where uh, everybody is. I have a really good friend. He goes to Boise State. And last night we were talking, he said the last time he was ever to perform in a marching band was November of 2019. Oh, my gosh. Really sad. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, Steve has district up there. Oh, Hi, Marilyn. What are you looking at over here? Oh, I just wanted to thank you, Jordiel, for sharing all of this information. And I do have one question. Uh, a marching band, uh, I'm pretty much aware of what all the instruments are, but maybe you could just uh, share with us what instruments will be played in that band. Yes. So uh, it will be just like a traditional concert band, high school band, uh, you will have flute, clarinet, oboe, uh, bassoon, you would have uh, other standard double reeds if we have anybody who auditions on those. Um, then you would have your saxophones, so your alto, tenor, berry sax, uh, you would have your brass then, so French horns, uh, trumpets, trombone, tubas, uh, which will be converted into sousaphones to make it a little bit easier for them to march. Uh, and then a drum line, so uh, percussion bass, so mallets uh, and and drums. Hey, any other questions, uh, Dwayne? Uh, just a comment. Uh, Jurdel uh, is going to let you know that we're going to put your presentation on our Facebook page, and also. Uh, I'll be putting it on MD19 Facebook page. Uh, and then uh, your portion of the uh, program, we'll be putting it on our local KLTV community access uh, television. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, also might mention that uh, to all of our members, our... Uh, the uh, videos that I've been making of our meetings, I uh, give a short report on that. Uh, the number of views we've been getting uh, last week, 111 views, the week before 126, and then 22, 151, 112, and the one for Head Start, 273 views. So people are watching. All right, All right. Fantastic, great job. Um, yeah. In the chat, I have added two links. Uh, the first link will be to the Lions fans website, uh, the, the one that you, you saw. And then the other one is to our Facebook group. Uh, there, it's where most of our information goes out of. Uh, it's an email. Uh, I can kind of share this real quickly if I have time before. Uh, since I did not get to that, because I talk too much sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, change and I'll share this with you. Uh, so, this is our, our Facebook page here. Uh, and it has all the information that is on our website. It has a link to the website. Um, our Facebook page is also a link to uh, the Washington Band Directors Association page. Uh, so anything that gets published here goes out to anybody who's on Facebook who's a band director or a friend of band directors who follow that page in Washington State, uh, which is about 3,000 plus people uh, on that current page so they can see all of our stuff. Uh, we also made videos introducing our staff that are going to get published on our, uh, our page here uh, shortly within the next few days. Um, this is... Uh, <laughs> 
this is Megan Wagner's introduction, uh, and she talks about why she uh, joined the band committee for Lions Club and, and all the things that she's done in her career. So uh, each staff member has gone through and, and made one of those. Oh, this is our at the actual district convention. Uh, there's Mr. Birch doing his introduction, and then Dr. Wasik's introduction, and all the other things here. Um, also on here, uh, for those of you who have parents, who are parents of kids who are in band, uh, just like we were speaking about before, there's that debate on can students perform inside or whatnot. If you go to our page, it has a um, link that is directly to why the state of Washington should adopt the national standard guidelines for reopening schools for music ed to allow students to perform in the classroom. And this is still a rolling tally of this petition. This petition has also been sent to Governor Ensley, uh, and he's working with us to getting students back into the classroom so they can be able to perform. Uh, so that's another way to help students out there uh, by signing that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation today. You guys are a blast. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I'll get when when everybody gets a, when Joanne gets a post and stuff, you might get some people that would be interested. So Yes. I we, hope so. We appreciate it very much that you presented today. I'd like to thank you very much for the Pioneer Lion, Longview Pioneer Alliance. Thank you. Okay. Um, nice now, Darlene, just real quick, I'm sorry. Um, we give our speakers a mug, Jordell, yeah. and so we're not in person, but it says Pioneer Lions, and I'd very much like to send one to you. So uh, if you would send me your address in the email, or, you know, I would I will make arrangements to pick up one of those mugs and get oh. it to you. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. I absolutely love mugs. <laughs> <laughs> As a student, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I will review a little bit. Uh, we have about five minutes. Okay. Zone meeting tonight at seven o'clock. Um, we will do induction on the end of the month, on the 23rd of February, when we do awards. We will do orientation on March 9th during our noon meeting. Is that correct, Steve? Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have those things um, on, on for our agenda. And I know I've got a deal from Sandy Cat that I think it's May 18th. Around that time, we're going to do the uh, scholarship. Okay. Is there anything else we need to discuss? Okay. Then I will adjourn this meeting for today. I appreciate Jardell for presenting today. It was very interesting and, and informative for our group. And I will see everybody next week. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, you a board meeting? Oh. Oh, what? Yeah. what, Hal? I just wanted, I thought Greg said something about an emergency board meeting. Not today. No, that'll be next week. Okay. All right. Great. All right. See you guys later. Thank you, everyone.